I'm Nigel Woodhouse. I occasionally make appearances with the Philharmonia Orchestra to play various fretted instruments. Today I'm going to talk about this instrument, which is a tenor banjo. To give you a short sample of the type of sound, I'm going to play this extract from Kurt Weill's Threatly Opera. This is the canon song. The banjo exists today in a variety of forms with different tunings. It, it originated from West Africa and was taken over to America as a result of the slave trade. The tenor banjo was perceived primarily as a chordal instrument and it was the driving force behind many of the early tried jazz bands. Uh, Louis Armstrong featured it in his early ensembles. It was only later replaced by the guitar uh, when amplification became available for the electric guitar. And many banjo players at that time switched from banjo to guitar. This instrument was made in Czechoslovakia by a maker called Trucha, but it's based very closely on the Gibson instruments of the, of the States. Uh, the Gibson master tone was uh, one of the most sought after instruments in the early part of the 20th century, and then they went out of production. Today they're being made by this luthier uh, Jaroslav Prucha, and they're made from a combination of wood and metal. The main body of the banjo is rather like a drum head. What would have originally been an animal skin stretched across a frame has now been replaced by synthetic material, but it pr produces a lot of the characteristic sound of the instrument. Inside the skin, there's also a metal ring which goes all the way around the circumference, which is called a tone ring. It's a piece of metal which adds to the resonance and the sustain of the instrument, as well as the weight. On the back of the instrument, there's a separate piece of wood. Not all banjos have these. This is called the resonator, which helps to reflect the sound back out to the front. Some forms of banjo are lighter in construction and some of them have open backs. The strings are tuned by turning these pegs, which are attached to machine heads gears which can be used to tighten or loosen the strings to bring them to the right pitch. The strings are tuned in fifths and they are the same as a viola. We have the note C as the lowest string, followed by G, D and A. The metal strips across the fingerboard are called frets and they are used to give us different notes as we press the strings down onto the fingerboard. Different types of banjo require different playing styles. This type is played with a plectrum, this piece of black plastic. There's also a similar instrument called the plectrum banjo, which is slightly longer neck, still just four strings and slightly different tuning. Other forms of banjo are often played with a combination of thumb and fingers, sometimes using metal finger picks, sometimes just using the fingernails. Earlier forms of banjo would have had gut strings. One of the most common forms of banjo which we hear today is the five string banjo, which is common in bluegrass music. The fifth string is a high string and it's usually played with the thumb. It's tuned in unison with the first string and it's the finger style playing across the strings with thumb and fingers that produces the rapid arpeggio technique which you hear in a lot of uh, folk and American bluegrass. This type of instrument has been adapted into something called the Irish banjo or the Irish tenor banjo. It's actually tuned like a mandolin but an octave lower. So instead of having a C as the lowest note, it would be a G, a fourth lower than that. So it's the same tuning as the violin or the mandolin, but an octave lower. In Irish music, this makes sense because a lot of the tunes are written for fiddle fingering and they can often be played in unison in octaves using the Irish tenor banjo tuning. Although the banjo doesn't appear that often in orchestral repertoire, it does have a lot of potential because of its um, percussive quality and its penetrating sound. Although it's mainly there to provide rhythm and harmony, it can occasionally be used to play melodies as well.
That was the opening theme from Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, one of the first crossover pieces, probably. The banjo is added to the orchestral score, along with saxophones, to create an element of jazz colour within the symphonic texture. In the 20th century, a number of composers were interested in the new American music called jazz and tried to incorporate it into their own writing. Shostakovich, for example, and Kurt Weill both wrote for the banjo in a jazz context. Where the instrument does appear, it's nearly always used to provide an accompanying chordal rhythm, which is what the instrument is good at. One of the most iconic solos where the banjo gets to play the tune is from Gershwin's opera Porgy and Bess in the song I Got Plenty of Nothing. In John Adams' piece Gnarly Buttons, which is effectively a clarinet concerto in three movements, he uses three different fretted instruments, a banjo in the first movement, a mandolin in the second, and a guitar in the third. In this extract, it features the banjo playing a rather fragmented melody with some awkward string crossings. Amongst the more unusual effects one can get on the banjo, uh, there's the Bartok Pizzicato. This is used by composer George Benjamin in his work Sometime Voices, where he takes the percussive element of the banjo one step further by asking the player to pull the string outwards and allowing it to snap back onto the fingerboard, such as this. One of the perils of playing a banjo part in an orchestra is that you don't know until you see the music what tuning the piece has been written for. The chord voicings could be written sometimes for a guitar tuning. Some players do tune the banjo the same as the top four strings of a guitar. Other players tune it in fifths. Often the chords have to be reworked before the part can, can be realised with any uh, accuracy. For those who are interested in taking up the banjo, it might be worth thinking about the type of music that you're interested in learning to play. A four-string instrument like this, played with a plectrum, lends itself to single-line melodic playing as well as chords. If you wanted to play uh, bluegrass and folk music, you might want to get um, a five-string banjo and learn to play with metal finger picks. If you particularly wanted to play Irish music, again, you could use this type of instrument, but you would use different strings so that it would be tuned a fourth lower with a low G on the fourth string. This is part of a tune called Banjo Picking Rag by Roy Smeck. He played a variety of fretted instruments and he was very active in the 20s and 30s. He was often known as the Wizard of the Strings and was famous for his uh, tuition on the ukulele. <laughs> 